So this morning we are going to look at an alternative viewpoint of uh, photon emission. In the previous lecture we looked at stationary states and we observed that even though wave functions they vary in time, their real part and their imaginary part, both of them change in time, they are dynamic, they are not static. But the probability density function does not change with time. As the probability density function tells us all there is to be known about the electron, the charge of the electron and how it is distributed in space does not change with time. Hence, there is no force acting on the charge. Therefore, the charge is not accelerating. Therefore, as a corollary, no radiation is emitted and the energy of the electron remains constant. If the electron remains in one state. And one state does not mean it's at a fixed distance. It, it just means that the wave function is, is just one wave function. It, does not, it, it may change with time, but the probability density function remains static. And the energy of this electron is well known. It's precise. There is no imprecision in the energy. We know what the energy is. However, we are limited by the uncertainty principle because we cannot measure this energy. The electron remains in that state for an infinitely long period of time because of the uncertainty principle. So we can't measure the energy but we can predict what the energy should be. Hence the energy is totally certain. Now we look at the alternative viewpoint or uh, an, another scenario. Again we start off with an infinite well and we have the ground state, the n equals 1 state and the n equals 2 state. So this is n1, this is n2. The wave function for the electron in this state is given by psi 1x which is also a function of time. Hence I would like to write capital Psi in the first state or the ground state. This is 2 over L under root sine of pi x over L multiplied by exponent minus E 1 T over H bar where E 1 is the energy of the electron when it is in the ground state. So this is the wave function of the electron. This is the matter wave, the quantum field, the pilot wave, the de Broglie wave of the electron when it is in the ground state and its energy is fixed E1 even though we cannot measure this energy because the electron is just sitting here okay so in order to look at the atom and see what the energy is something has to come out of the come out of this well and that is probably a photon that has to come out but in any case the energy is fixed E1 we know what the energy is so even without measuring you can tell what your energy is. It's E1. There is no imprecision about it. Alright. G. Does the same apply to electrons already? Yes. So the question uh, the student has asked is in an atom for example the hydrogen atom the electron has a certain wave function we do not know where the position of the electron is because we cannot make even an attempt to find the position of the electron it's smeared out it's almost everywhere so since the energy depends upon the position uh, distance from the nucleus we shouldn't be able to tell anything about the energy as well. So that's the question. In a hydrogen atom, even in this case, let's look at this case. The electron is in the ground state. Do we know the position of the electron? No, we don't. It could be anywhere inside this well. We know nothing about the position of the electron. Yes, we can tell what the most probable position is. It's going to be at the center. We can tell what the expectation value of the position is. Yes, by looking at the wave function. But even then its energy is fixed. So like, so an electron that is inside a hydrogen atom 
it's in an orbital, its wave function is smeared out. The wave function will have some form like this. Okay, we cannot tell precisely where the particle is because that is a bogus question. However, we can tell where is the particle more likely to be found. That is where the maximum of the probability density function is. So we can give it a most probable position. For the electron in the ground state in the hydrogen atom, the most probable position is the Bohr's radius, as you found out. But if it's in this wave function, if the electron possesses this wave function, it's in this state, its energy is fixed. Okay, so the energy in the old quantum theory, the energy depends upon the distance from the nucleus. But in the new quantum theory, it doesn't. It depends upon what wave function the electron is in. Okay. So now if the electron, the same electron were in the first excited state, its wave function would be 2 over L under root sine of 2 pi x over L exponent minus E2 T over H bar where E2 is the energy in this state <coughs> and the wave function looks like this alright so the electron can be in the ground state the electron can be in an excited state but we've seen multiple times in the past when we're considering the interference experiment with electrons with photons with protons that the electron in an interference experiment can pass through two slits at the same time which means its wave function is in fact a superposition of two component wave functions and when it is in a superposition we cannot tell the position we cannot tell which slit the electron has passed through okay so its position becomes imprecise but the momentum becomes precise because you're seeing an interference pattern so a superposition can exist and it does exist now the question is in this case if this is one wave function and this is another wave function and still we have one electron inside the well the electron can indeed exist in a superposition of these wave functions <coughs> which means that the electron can have a wave function that is the sum of these wave functions Again, you cannot ask the question, okay, uh, the, which state the electron is in. This, this question will have only one answer. And that answer is the electron is in a superposition. The combined state or the overall state of the electron when in a superposition of n equals 1 and n equals 2 that is going to be psi 1 x of t plus psi 2 x of t so an electron can exist in a superposition Remember, we're not worried about the position of the electron because the position of the electron is smeared out anyway. We, we cannot ask the question, where is the electron? Okay? The electron is everywhere. So, we should be satisfied that if the electron is in a superposition, we don't have to answer where is the electron. Because where is the electron is a bogus question per se. So, the electron is in a superposition and we lose our knowledge of what the energy of the electron is if it is in a superposition state just like an interference experiment if we see interference fringes on this screen and we have electrons one at a time striking this screen and they form an interference fringe we cannot tell which slit the electron has gone through we cannot tell the position of the electron. We are uncertain about the position of the electron. In other words, the electron is now in a superposition of two wave functions. A wave function corresponding to the electron emerging from this slit and a wave function corresponding to the electron emerging from this slit. And the new wave function is like this. 
in this region. So the total field of the electron, of a single electron, is smeared out in this region and it is described by this superposition. And then you have a collapse. Either you get this or you get this. Right? The collapse is something different. So in this case, we can also have a superposition and when the superposition state exists, we cannot tell what the energy of the electron is. The energy becomes imprecise. Just like here, the position of the electron becomes imprecise. We cannot tell the position of the electron. In this example, we cannot tell the energy of the electron. Now, suppose the electron is in a superposition. And this is the superposition. And for normalization, I put in a 1 over under root 2 here. You don't have to worry about this factor too much. This is just for normalization. The total wave function is proportional to the sum. Okay, now what I would like to do, the superposition is a sum. In other words, I can also write the superposition as 1 over under root 2. What is psi 1? It's 2 over L under root sine of pi x over L exponent minus e 1 t over h bar plus 2 over l under root sine of 2 pi x over l exponent minus e 2 t over h bar. Now I cannot tell what the energy of the electron is. I've become, uh, I've become uncertain about it. So, certainty or uncertainty ko dekhne ka ek, ek aur matlabi. There are two realms of possibilities of energy. If I measure what the energy of the electron is, I can get two values. Another way of looking at it, this is as follows. If I tell you that the sun rises in the east, Everyone knows that the sun rises in the east. It's not going to add anything to your knowledge. It's not going to subtract anything from your knowledge because this is a well-known fact of life and everyone knows this. So there is no discontinuous change in your knowledge when you receive this information that the sun rises in the east. Okay? Your knowledge remains what it is. It doesn't care whether you receive this information that the sun rises in the east or it rises in the west. You know that it rises in the east. So this is something certain. Now if I tell you that on, uh, on the exoplanet Pluto, which is no longer a part of our solar system, that's why I call it an exoplanet, the egg on the exoplanet Pluto, if you live on Pluto, the sun rises in the west. Now if I give you this information, this adds to your body of knowledge. You don't know this already. You thought that the sun could have risen on the east or the sun could have risen in the west on Pluto. But I provide you with this no information that the sun rises in the west. So there is a discontinuous change in your knowledge. You know something more which you hadn't already known. You had two a realm of possibilities with two possibilities and now you know the actual fact. So this is the collapse of the wave function. The quantum field has collapsed. Likewise in this case you have two possibilities for the energy. Once you make a measurement you can tell what the energy of the electron is and this wave function collapses. So another way of looking at certainty and uncertainty is in terms of knowledge. How much knowledge do you gain by looking at a wave function? Now if the electron is in this superposition state, I can simplify the superposition state slightly by writing this in the following form. Psi x of t is given by 1 over under root 2 and this part, this part is just a spatial part of psi 1 correct just a spatial part so I can represent this by a small psi I 
I just want to make my life a little bit easier. What I've done? I've just put this equal to psi 1 x just the spatial part and I put this equal to psi 2 x. <coughs> just try to simplify this equation. So this is what happens when the electron is in a superposition. Iota kaise aa raha ye ye yahan pe iota hai now this is the wave function the wave function of the electron when it's in a superposition state now what i would like you to do is i would like you to calculate the probability density function please from this wave function i give you 5 minutes for this अब सुबह पोजीशन करने का माइनस की जगह प्लस आई आ जाएगा और साई का भी कॉन्जुगेट लेना है वो साई स्टार होगा उसमें और ये भी कॉन्जुगेट हो जाएगा ये भी कॉन्जुगेट हो जाएगा लेकिन ये रियल है पहले ही First of all, try writing the complex conjugate of the wave function. ऑर्गेनल का मतलब है जब मल्टीप्लाई करके इंटेग्रेट करते हैं तब जीरो आता है। अभी इंटेग्रेट नहीं कर रहे सिर्फ डेंसिटी फंक्शन फाइंड करने। इसका भी तो होगा कंप्लेक्स वन में साइब साइब वन का Sunny over. Is Kabi to conjugate me? Or conjugate me a plus other? ऑर्गेनालिटी प्रॉपर्टी यूज़ नहीं करनी क्योंकि जीरो नहीं होगा ये हैज एनीवन बीन एबल टू फाइंड आउट दी कंप्लीट आंसर नहीं नहीं कोई और कोसाइन साइन 
Simplify this further, very good. Simplify this a little bit further. This is an exponent plus something and exponent minus of the same thing. What does it mean? Sabir found the common lake. Isko simplify karto shabash. Shabash. Very good. Isko aage common lake na simplify karto. Kyunki ye bhi real hai, ye bhi real hai. To inka complex conjugate wohi hota hai. All right. So some students have managed to do this algebra. It's only algebra. So, I would like to take the complex conjugate of Psi and multiply it with Psi itself. So, I get a 1 by 2 Psi 1 exponent plus iota e t over h bar plus Psi 2 star x exponent iota e to t over h bar and this is being multiplied by the wave function itself which is psi 1 x exponent minus e i e t over h bar plus psi 2 exponent minus i.e. 2 t over h bar now I have to perform this multiplication half nothing happens to the half now when I multiply this term with this term the exponents cancel out this is iota plus something minus iota something alright so this cancels out and I obtain psi 1 star x psi 1x I multiply this term with this term I get psi 2 star x psi 2x now I would like to multiply this term with this term I would get psi 1 star x psi 2 exponent iota now I have to multiply this exponential factor with this exponential factor so the powers add up when I add up the powers I get exponent minus iota e2 minus e1 t over h bar now when I multiply this term with this term I would get plus psi 1x psi 2x star exponent of iota e2 minus e1 t h bar ok so this is the complete multiplication first algebra nothing special about it now if you notice a few observations let's Pxt equals one half. What is this equal to? It's psi one mod squared. What is this equal to? Psi two mod squared. Of course, this is a function of x. This is a function of x. Now, is psi 1 star x equal to psi 1 x? Is psi 1 real? Yeah, it's real here. Psi 1 is real. 
so what is the complex conjugate of a real number itself the complex conjugate of a real number is the number itself so psi 1 star is actually equal to psi 1 psi 2 is the same as psi 2 star so this term is the same as this term so I would like to write this as psi 1 x psi 2 star x but psi 2 star x is just psi 2 because psi 2 is also real and then I would like to take I take this term as common and then I would like to write this exponent summed up with that exponent now let's write E2 minus E1 let's call this the energy difference between these levels if I call this the energy difference my wave function turns out to be exponent iota delta E T over H bar plus exponent minus iota delta E T over H bar this equals one half psi 1 x squared plus psi 2 x squared plus psi 1 x psi 2 x and what is this equal to use a trigonometric identity and see what this term is equal to Mahir Abhato delta E Shabash very good so it's going to be two times cosine of delta E T over H bar now this is getting very simple this is looking very elegant now psi 1 mod x psi 1 x mod squared since psi 1 is just real the modulus of psi 1 is the wave function itself okay if I have a real number what's the magnitude of the real number it's the number itself do you understand what's I have a real number 3 I take the modulus of 3 what's what is this equal to it's 3 so if I have a real number I don't worry about the imaginary part because the imaginary part doesn't exist the modulus of a real number is the number itself okay so this can be simplified a little bit further I, I can write one half psi 1 x squared plus psi 2 x squared plus two times psi 1 x psi 2 x and what are the dimensions of delta e over h bar what is delta E over H bar equal to? What does it look like? It looks like a, a frequency. So I can replace delta E over H bar by a frequency omega. So I get a cosine omega T. Now this is my probability density function. Just, I give you half a minute, just try swallowing this. Just try to see what I've written on the, what I've done. We don't want to rush. Just assimilate this into your bloodstream. See what's going on. Abhi tell me, aata mera soch lo pehle. Delta E is second, H bar is second, how is it going to be a frequency? Delta E is zero. 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 Delta E
ठीक है तो ये पूरे का पूरा कोई डिमेंशन ही होगा लेकिन सॉरी चौक लग गया टी टी को इग्नोर करो ना डेल्टा ही और एच बार है जूल ओवर जूल सेकेंड वो पर सेकेंड हो जाएगा ना तो टी को तो नहीं मैंने छेड़ा टी को तो वैसे लिख दिया अच्छा आप डेल्टा ही ओवर एच की बात जी ये 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 साइज को तो समझ आया नहीं इसका कौन ये भी समझ आया भी समझ ऐसे बताएं पे हमने क्यों नहीं कह सकते क्योंकि पसाई वन का मॉडुलस एक्स कॉन्जुगेट है वो के बराबर ही है अच्छा अच्छा तभी क्या आपने कोई गलती की है लिखने में यहाँ पे ऐसे नहीं है देखो ना आपने कोई गलती की है लिखने में वो टर्म्स आपने एक्सपोनेंट वाली टर्म आपने इग्नोर कर दी ये जो आप स्टेप से कॉस में लेके आते हैं कौन से रिलेटेड देखो मेरी बात सुनो हम चूंकि वी आर हुक्ट ऑन टू फॉर्मूलाज आई वुड जस्ट लाइक टू मैंशन दैट इफ यू हैव ई आई थीटा प्लस ई माइनस आई थीटा ओवर टू दिस इज को साइन थीटा ओके एंड इफ आई हैव ई आई थीटा माइनस ई माइनस आई थीटा ओवर टू आयोटा दिस इज साइन थीटा I'm not going to provide you with these formulas. All right. So this is my probability density function. First question: Are you comfortable with the algebra? No. What's the problem, Ikra? Your name is Ikra. So what's what's happening here? What are you not comfortable with? Too much calculation. Too much confusion. Should I do it once again? Should I go over it once? Mm-hmm. Okay. What about the rest? That's why I give you one minute post the calculation so that you can transpire and see what's going on. So what I've done, I've taken a superposition state. I started off with this state. I took the complex conjugate of the wave function. I multiplied with the wave function because I would like to calculate this. I just do a point by point multiplication of terms and I arrive at this formula. First question. Is the probability density function constant in time? Is it stationary in time? Does it change with time or not? Yes, it does change with time because there is a time factor here. And how? Suno baat ab dhyan se. Ye aapko kisi kitab mein nahi milegi is andaz mein. Ye jo probability density function hai is now dynamic. It changes with time. This is our first introduction to a changing probability density function. The probability density function is now changing. Agar ye term na hoti, if this term were zero. Then we could have said that the probability density function is static in time; it doesn't change with time. But now, the density function itself changes with time, and it changes with a precise frequency, with a certain frequency, and that frequency is omega. So let me uh, <coughs> look at how the probability density function is changing with time. Suppose. First of all, I'm going to plot this function, cosine omega t. All right, I just plot this bare function, this raw function. What does it look like? This is time.
देखिए मैं आपको क्वांटम मैकेनिक्स की असल पावर दिखाने जा रहा हूं आज कोसाइन ओमेगा टी इट्स अ टाइम वेरिंग फंक्शन ओके आई जस्ट प्लॉटिंग अ रॉ फंक्शन दिस इज जस्ट अ प्लॉट ऑफ कोसाइन ओमेगा टी वर्सेस टाइम हेयर टाइम इक्वल जीरो What's the time here? Right at the back, blue T-shirt. इसका क्या नाम इसका यहां पर time कितना है What's the time at this point? पाई बाई टू नहीं आपके साथ ही बताए कुछ सोचो जहन जहन की खिड़कियां खोलो जरा Anyone from this from this lane from the back? When is this cosine function equal to zero? हाँ बताओ. When omega t equals pi by two. So what is time equal to? Pi over two omega. So at this point, the time is pi over two omega. What's what's the time here? Pi by omega. Uh, co cosine of uh, right. This is pi by omega. What's this point? This is three pi over two omega, and this point. is 2 pi over omega and so on so this is the cosine function nothing special about it you must have studied this function in your o levels everyone clear on this now let me call this point a okay let me call this point a and let me call this point b now what i would like you to do i would like you to plot or tell me what the probability density function is at a that is what is the probability density function <coughs> at time 0 can you please calculate this for me i am at a time is 0 what is this probability density function equal to just calculate this सिंप्लीफाई करो ना स्क्वेयर की टाइम में लिखो वो और केस वो और केस था ध्यान से सुनो दिस टर्म इज ओमेगा टी इक्वल जीरो दिस टर्म इज वन सो यू गेट दिस टर्म दिस टर्म एंड दिस टर्म विद वन so i one gets 1 over 2 psi 1 x squared plus psi 2 x squared plus 
psi 1 x psi 2 x and this is just equal to 1 half psi 1 x plus psi 2 x whole squared okay so this is what we see at point A now time passes on you can't stop time what ko roka nahi ja sakta theek hai so when when you can't stop time you are at time t equals 0 and then time progresses which means the states evolve in time and when the states evolve in time the probability density function changes i would like you to find out what the probability density function is going to be at point b Superposition was stationary state. Thi. So the probability density function at point B equals p x and time as pi over omega this equals one half psi 1 x minus psi 2 x squared beautiful result really beautiful and you'll understand the beauty of this result when I ask you to plot what this probability density function looks like <laughs> Alright, so what I would like you to do now is you have this probability density function. Just look at this term. It's the answer to know the wave function plus the second wave function. This is the first wave function minus the second wave function. So the relative phase of the second wave function with respect to the first wave function is changing. So what I would like you to do now first is to draw on your notebooks an axis that goes from x equals 0 to L draw two axes First of all, I would like you to draw what this term psi 1x plus psi 2x without the square without the square is going to look like at point A and then what is the total wave function or this term going to look like which is point B okay and I've drawn the wave functions over there in the infinite well just make a sketch Probably you learn drawing after this class as well. Just make a sketch. Chabash, very good. So, what is this? Chabash, good. Achha. This is going to be zero to four. I am going to say that.
Yeah, on you're on the correct path. Addition, बिल्कुल. इस region में add करो ये positive है negative है तो zero की तरफ जाएगा. स्क्वेयर बार में लेते हैं सवाल समझ आए सवाल समझ आ गया हाँ शाबाश गुड गुड और यहाँ से इस तरह से ये वाला नहीं ये वाला ये वाला सर शाबाश गुड When I say a plot, I would expect something more accurate. When I say a sketch, I would say something. What does the graph look like? So at point A, the way, psi A plus psi one plus psi two looks something like this. Roughly, and psi one minus psi two looks something like this. Roughly, and of course the superposition has to go to zero outside the well. Now what I would like to do, I would like to take the square of this. To find out the probability density function. So if I take the square of this function, the hump goes up, nothing else happens, and it changes its shape slightly. And this hump goes up. So now what is happening is that the probability density function is toggling. It's toggling between the left hand of the left part of the well and the right part of the well since cosine is is periodic in time therefore the probability density function starts off like this it this decreases this hump starts appearing this decreases this hump grows this hump drops this hump grows and then this hump starts falling back so there is a periodic toggling of the probability density function between the left part of the potential well and the right part of the potential well and what is the frequency of this toggling equal to it's equal to omega the frequency of toggling as you can observe from here is equal to omega and what is omega equal to? Omega equals to the energy difference divided by h bar. So the energy difference equals h bar omega. So what do we learn from our old quantum theory? What does this signify in the old quantum theory? What's happening according to the old quantum theory? Okay, can you tell us something old quantum theory se koi relationship nazar aara hai aapko something that we've learnt multiple times in this course energy is quantized of course but what is happening here right there is some difference between the energy levels Abdul Rahman khamoshi se bato there is some difference between the energy levels now since there is a difference between the energy levels and that difference equals E2 minus E1 an electron is making a transition in the old quantum theory, in the old picture 
an electron is making a transition from the upper state there's an electron that was sitting here it makes a downward transition comes back to the ground state and in the process it emits a photon it emits a photon and this photon carries an energy h bar omega and this energy equals to the energy difference so what we are observing here in the new quantum theory thanks to Erwin Schrodinger is that the potential distribution function is now changing in time and it's toggling with the frequency omega so when the probability density function is toggling with the frequency omega what's happening is what about the charge inside this potential well is it also toggling with time yes, yes because the probability density function really shows a charge that is smeared out in space and this charge is redistributing itself in time so when the charge is redistributing itself is there a force acting on the charge equivalently there is a force acting on the charge which means the charge is accelerating now when the charge is accelerating because the electrons probability density function is toggling it's changing with time it has to emit off radiation and that radiation is emitted off as a stream of photons with the correct energy energy is conserved so this picture of the probability density function makes complete is in complete harmony with what we've learned so far previously we've learned that the electron makes a transition from the upper state to the lower state it comes down and it emits a photon what we've learned today is that this emission of a photon is in fact equivalent to the electron existing in a superposition state so we should really stop thinking of an electron as a discrete particle that falls from a higher level to a lower level and in the process emits a photon in the proper quantum theory <coughs> transitions mean superpositions whenever you have a superposition state the electron is in a superposition state a photon is being emitted so you can imagine that a transition really means so when an electron is making a transition what is the wave function of the electron the wave function is the superposition before the transition has been made the wave function is psi 2 after the transition has been made the wave function is psi 1 the photon has been emitted but what's the wave function while the transition is being made abhi ab transit lounge mein baithe hain transit lounge mein baitha hua electron during that transition what is its state its state is in a superposition you fly from lahore to karachi while you're on plane you're both in lahore and karachi at the same time that's what this effectively means because you're in a superposition state so now everything is working very neatly we have a probability density function that is changing with time what happens in between we've only seen the points a and b what happens in between this is what happens in between now i'm going to show you a simulation to actually demonstrate this i'm going to have to place the pointers a little bit so
representative. Now what we're seeing on the screen is what I've tried to plot on the blackboard in a stroboscopic fashion. That I've, I've plotted this wave function at different points in time. But this is a continuous simulation of what is happening. There is, this is the infinite well, this is the position. Now what's happening is that this program is solving the Schrodinger equation. Here you can see the time. This yellow on the bottom right is showing how time is progressing. Time is changing with time and the two humps of the African alphabet, one is depleting its nutrition and the other hump is filling up nutrition. So the probability density goes down in this half while it goes up in this half. And this toggling is at the frequency omega. And that omega is also the frequency of the emitted photon, Bhatinagare. It's also the, that, the same frequency. So now charge is redistributing itself, which would imply that electromagnetic radiation has to go out. Now at any one point, question, what's the total area under this curve? One. And that remains constant. If you integrate this probability density function, from 0 to L, you'll always get 1. Because, why do you get 1? Because you want to integrate this probability density function, you integrate this, what do you get? 1. You integrate just, just the first wave function, the ground state, you integrate it, you get 1. You integrate this, you get 1. You integrate this, you get 0 because of the cosine omega t. You get 0 and, and because of these terms. Which means that this is 1 plus 1 plus 0 which is 2. I have a factor of 1 over half, 1 half here. So the total probability density, probability density changes with time but the total probability of finding the electron inside the well does not change with time. That remains 1. So the electron cannot escape the well. It is in a prison. It cannot escape the well. It's doomed to remain there for all times to come because it's an infinite well. But the probability density function itself is struggling down up. Now this will come down whereas this will go up. Okay? Now, if you can see that this hump is going up, but now the hump is going down, it comes down from the top. That's why it comes down, because this cosine function the slope of the cosine function is zero at the maxima and the minima and it's uh, the fastest here. So here the change appears to be fastest whereas the change on these maxima and minima appears to be the slowest. Now this is the, put, uh, this is the probability density function. What about the wave function itself? The wave function is a superposition. It will have real parts and imaginary parts and that's also going to change with time. So the red part is the real part of the superposition wave function, this red part. The blue part is the imaginary part of the superposition wave function and both of these parts of course they are changing in time. So now we have a superposition of two states. Let's see what happens if we have a superposition of three states. In fact, that's the power of quantum mechanics. You don't have to confine your system to one state. It can be in two states at the same time. It can be in three states at the same time. Four states at the same time. A hundred states at the same time. And that is, is what gives the power to quantum computers. Quantum computers can act on states which are superpositions and very large superpositions. They can have hundreds of wave functions that are their components. 
So in normal Boolean logic, you have a 0 and a 1. Right? You have a truth table, you make a truth table, you have a 0 and a 1. A low voltage and a high voltage. But in a quantum computer, you can have 0 and 1 at the same time. Because you can have superposition state. So let's, let me just show you what the wave function for a superposition comprising the ground state, the first excited state and the second excited state looks like. Just to give you a visual appreciation of the beauty of quantum mechanics. superposition of three states the ground state the first excited state and the second excited state and this is what the probability density function looks like <coughs> it looks like beats there are two frequencies omega 1 minus omega 2 omega 1 plus omega 2 <coughs> I can have a superposition of five quantum states. Let's plot that. And this is what the wave functions look like in a superposition of three states. Let's have a superposition of five states. Sorry. superposition of five states. I don't think evolution has given us such a camel. <laughs> now let's move back to the superposition of two states. I want to show you something interesting. this time the hump goes down the left hump goes down and the left hump then goes up again in about 0.8 seconds okay 0.8 seconds because I would also have to see when the right hump goes down right so it takes 0.8 seconds to make one the hump go up and then come down and then go up again okay 0.8 seconds now I would like to increase the energy spacing between the energy levels. I would like to double it. How long would it take? It should take 4 seconds. It, would, it should take less time because now the frequency is higher. So what I am going to do, I am going to increase the energy spacing between the first two levels. Okay? So let's repeat this. So just keep an eye on, uh, let's repeat this, just keep an eye on this time. I making it go back to zero and you look at the time when the hump goes down and then up but you should also look at the second hump so when the process repeats itself just observe the time how long does it take for the process to repeat itself I'm going to run it again stop Okay, so I made the time zero. Just observe what's the period of this oscillation. It's 
point, roughly 0.8 seconds. Okay. Now I'm going to increase the energy spacing, and I expect the frequency to go up, which means that the whole process should repeat itself in four seconds instead of eight. All right, so now look at the time variable. Right, 0.4 seconds. So I've doubled the energy spacing between the first two levels and the oscillation in the probability density function has now doubled in frequency. So it happens more faster, which means it happens faster, sorry, which means that a photon of higher frequency of double the frequency is emitted while the electron is making this transition. Alright, so last couple of minutes I would like to initiate a very important discussion. Let's stop this for a minute. <coughs> Infinite wells are an idealization. They don't really exist in our lives. So what if I have a potential energy distribution function. This is an infinite well. It's an idealization. But what if I the potential energy inside here is zero. What if I make this potential well such that the floor of this potential well is sloping? Which means the potential energy is lower at one end and the potential energy is higher at the other end. Okay. What if I have a potential well which is infinite but it has a hump inside. The potential energy goes higher. What is the wave function of the electron? What if the potential energy is zero everywhere and there's an electron here and it has a certain wave function, it encounters an obstacle. And the obstacle is such that the potential energy suddenly goes up by some V naught. Will the electron with a certain energy be able to surmount this obstacle? Just imagine once again a rabbit trapped in a valley. The rabbit is here. Right, this is our rabbit, long ears. Now this rabbit is trapped in a valley and these hills have a certain height. Now if this rabbit feeds on the nutrition in this valley, it's a lush green valley, it feeds on the nutrition, it gathers up energy, keeps on gathering energy. If it wants to come out of this valley, it has to gather enough energy, a chemical energy budget that increase is beyond MGH so that it can cross the hill. Aista aista wo ju ju ye upar jata jayega haamta jayega, haamta jayega, apni energy ko lose karta jayega. Bichara, agar uski energy e MGH ke barabar hogi, it can just reach the tip of the hill. It may not be able to go over. Agar energy MGH se kam hogi, wo yahan tak pahunchega, apni sari energy lose kar dega, it will fall back. So this rabbit seems to be in doomed to exist in this valley for a very long time unless it gathers enough energy to cross this obstacle. Okay? If it has energy higher than MGH, of course it can come out of the valley, it can escape. So 
this is the classical picture in quantum mechanics even if this rabbit if this were a quantum rabbit <laughs> this quantum rabbit even if it had some energy that was slightly smaller than mgh it can cross the obstacle in other words in quantum mechanics the kinetic energy can be negative which is something really really strange so i'm going to talk about this tomorrow inshallah